first, we'll start here, is edge to edge quilting. And that would be that you'll start at one edge of your quilt, you'll move to the other, stitching through your design. This is a flower design. It has one pass, so if I start here, I'll stitch all the way through and end here and go into my next board. And I've totally quilted that. The next one is a cloud. If you'll notice the difference between these two, this one is quite densely quilted. This is a little bit looser, fluffy quilting. Clouds, this has two passes, starts here and finishes into your next board, and then you'd go back and do it again. Now, here's another one, a little lo looser quilting. Same thing, it has one pass, but as we quilt this, you'll notice that there's crossovers. So as you start quilting this, you want to make sure that you do a finger draw. Draw through that and know where your pass is and the path of the quilting so that when you get to this butterfly, you won't go off some other direction. Here is another tighter quilted one. This is a great one for a masculine quilting, kind of a windy effect and it will nest, and I'll show you that in a minute, how these nest together so that you'll never see that row unquilted between them. Now, the, fe the leaves, look at the difference between these two. This, there's a lot of nice smooth curves. This one, you'll see a lot of sharp points. And we'll go through that and sh talk about how we get those good sharp points because that's what we want to how to mimic that design. Now I'm going to move into some designs and this is a edge to edge design but it has some nesting so that this design will nest into this in the, in the next row. So we have a reference point to line it up with. The same so we can line that up across the quilt so we don't have a lot of open space with that. Another one, the Baptist fan, very traditional design. This can be done on lots of different quilts and still enhance the quilt. There's a line right here. This is not quilted. This mimics this line that is quilted. So it's a perfect placement for lining up your quilt without spaces between. And I want to show you how that works with this quilt here. You'll see the difference in the spaces. If you're not careful, you have too wide a spaces, or if you're not careful, you sometimes will overlap. So it's very important to use that line for lining up. We can have also on this side, I'll show you uh, what it really should lo look like. The spacing should be pretty consistent with the spacing in here. Okay. So we'll move on to our next one. This is another very traditional design and it's easy to line up. This is one you'll want to definitely line up all the way across your quilt so that you don't have these points quilt down into the next clamshell. And this is a clamshell, easy, traditional, looks great on a lot of different quilts. The tree, the point, you see the point? That is your reference point again, so it's easy to line this up. And this, you'll think, well, I have to do this on maybe a woodsy quilt or a masculine quilt, but this, once it's quilted out, it does not necessarily look like a tree. It has just these zigzag lines, so it can be quilted on a lot of different quilts and enhance the quilt. Now, I have a f the rose here, and I have drawn this rose again recreated that and I want to know because this doesn't have reference points I want to know what my spacing needs to be so I can actually take this rose and shift it down here and to see where is it going to nest in properly so that I can advance my quilt properly and so as I as I advance that where do I want that to be I don't want this loop to be over the top of that, so if I were to leave it like this and advance it, where the spacing here, this leaf would quilt over the top of that loop. So I need to shift that down 
And then I could take a Sharpie marker, and this is my board, so that I can actually put a dot maybe right there, if I move that, and place a dot right there, which would mimic that same uh, petal up there. And then as I advance my quilt, that's my reference point to line it up. All right, let's now move on to some other designs. We have the feather design and we have a feather corner. This corner will go all four corners, so we only need to purchase one corner and we can use all of our feathers. And I want to open this quilt up here and show you how this is quilted with the feather design. And the tip for this is, before you ever load this onto your, fab onto your frame, you want to place your corners in here. So you'll place this on your fabric, and usually underneath that, but you'd place this on your fabric, and with a blue marker, you will put a dot right where this is going to be in your corner. Then you'll move it over to your other corner, and you'll do the same thing. And you'll do all four corners. That way, now I know my corners. Now it's time to place our feather. And these feathers match up with the, we'll, we'll turn that the right way, with the feather corner. And we'll place that along there. So what if my fabric is too big or too small? so that it won't fit with this complete board. Well, if you'll notice here on my board, I have feathers that if you parallel across, this feather and this point, this point and this point match. So if I need to um, eliminate a couple of feathers, I can stop here, I can raise my groovy board stylus, and I can move my stylus over and place it in here and continue quilting. And those will fit and work so that I can eliminate. If I need to add, I can do the same thing. I can shift my board the other direction and add another feather to that. So this is an easy one to be able to add or subtract feathers and get the e exact size of your quilt. Because how often do we quilt feathers or make a quilt that exactly matches our groovy boards, which it doesn't happen. All right, now we're going to go into some circles or some blocks. This is the feather. Who, who can do feathers perfect? You can with your groovy board. It has the center point, so this is your lineup. You'll find that center point on the block of your quilt. Place your stylus there, and then you'll have that perfectly centered in your quilt. This is an 8 inch, and this is a 12 inch. Another fun thing with this, if you'll look at this, this has another design in it. This can either be a sun or some people say a saw blade. So you've got feathers, but you can use this in other ways. Now, another block, and this is our square. And if you'll notice our circle, let's compare the two. Our circle is on one long board. Our square comes on two. The square, if we want to, we can turn this and do an on-point design with our quilting, or you can keep it square. So I have the squares that radiate in here. I also have the spiral squares that go around. I can quilt any part of this a little bit, or I can do the whole thing. And as this goes in, you'll notice that it comes in here and then it goes back out. So if I choose not to go back out, then I have my lines further apart. Okay, our next one is our circle. Our circle has so many options that we can use it for. If I want to do my own feathers on my quilt rather than using the groovy board, I need a perfect circle. I can use any circle within this to do it. And these are all radiating into the center. It has my center point so that I know exactly where to line it up. And then I also have my stylus, or I mean, my, excuse me, my, um, my spiral. The same thing, I can come into the center and then it takes me back out again. I can use as many or as little um, rings around here as 